Good morning and welcome to our devotion as we begin our Friday morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And we'll consider today Isaiah 60, verses 3 to 6. Today it is, in fact, the day of Epiphany, and the, the ending of the Christmas season and the beginning of the Epiphany season, um, the day we... We remember the, the wise men or, or the magi who came to visit baby Jesus sometime later than his birth, maybe a year or two later. Um, and the, the Isaiah 60 reading is a very common reading in the Epiphany season. We read Isaiah 63 to 6. All nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all together, they come to you. Your son shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult because of the abundance of the sea, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Epha, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. Our text is a vivid prophetic picture, and in all of Holy Scripture, there is almost nothing that is similar. Isaiah lived 800 years before the birth of Christ, but before his prophetic eyes, the dark room of the coming centuries was opened. He clearly beheld the birth of the Savior as well as his resurrection and ascension. This prompted him to call to the small flock of believers, lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Already he could see the apostles of the Lord going out into all the world and gathering millions of heathens to the church of Jesus Christ. All of this was, the most, glor was most gloriously fulfilled. At Pentecost, thousands from every region of the globe were won for Christ by Peter's sermon. Some of the converted, Isaiah says in verse 5 of today's reading, are the abundance of the sea. If in the Old Testament the word sea was mentioned without any further details, the Mediterranean was meant. This sea not only borders Palestine, but also washes against the coasts of three continents, Asia, Africa, and Europe. The gospel achieved its first and greatest victory from among the multitude living along this sea. There, Paul worked, filling all of Asia Minor and Greece and Italy with the gospel. It also appears that he journeyed to Spain. Mark, meanwhile, was founding the African congregations, especially in Egypt, with his preaching. Isaiah adds, a multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Epha. Even those who live in the homelands of the camels will receive the gospel. These are the regions of the east and the near east, namely from Persia and Arabia to the East Indies and Ethiopia. The wise men testified to the rise of the gospel in the eastern regions. The treasurer of the Ethiopian queen, Candace, whom Philip brought to faith and baptized, provides evidence that the gospel spreads to the lands south of Egypt. Church history also tells us that the Apostle Thomas, in particular, preached Christ crucified to the Medes and Persians, and that Bartholomew sealed his witness of Christ with his blood in the East Indies. It is also known that Matthew was the herald of the gospel in southern Ethiopia, and the inhabitants of, out, of outermost northern Russia recognize Andrew as their apostle, who also confirmed his evangelical preaching with his martyr's death. Therefore, that which Isaiah prophetically described many centuries before, lift up your eyes all around, O church of the living God, and see. 
They all, from the four corners of the earth, gather together. They come to you and fall down before the incarnate Son of God. This was fulfilled before all eyes by the time the apostles died. Where now are the borders of the kingdom of God? Where is there an earthly ruler with a kingdom as extensive as that of the one who died in disgrace upon the cross? Is there a single country in the world without subjects who in holy baptism pledged themselves to the blood flag of their eternal redeemer? Yes, the voice of the gospel has gone out with power into all lands and it has sounded to the ends of the earth. It has penetrated the impenetrable jungles of Africa, reached the icy heights of the furthest north, resounded through the Pacific Islands, and made its way through the gates of America that Satan had long held shut with powerful bolts. Jesus Christ is the only king, and he rules among his enemies just as the scriptures prophesied. There is no language in which the name of Jesus will not be called. All distinctions of national origin and race have fallen. Everywhere, people confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Countless emperors, kings, princes, and lords have laid down their scepters, crowns, and royal garments before the staff of the Good Shepherd, humbly worshiping at the foot of the cross. And so we pray. Come, Holy Ghost, God and Lord, be all thy graces now outpoured on each believer's mind and heart, thy fervent love to them impart. Lord, by the brightness of thy light, thou in the faith dost men unite. Of every land and every tongue, this to thy praise, O Lord our God, be sung. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things. On this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll join together in prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you all for joining us for our devotion, and the Lord be with you throughout the weekend.